I gave you this one and that one. I hear you. <laughs> Thank you, finding you. Out front. <clears throat> right out front, she's standing out there.
senior vice president of the major bank, and he deals with the So you can get the closures and I get him to pay him dollars. Jump over the right side. Yeah, do that. Remember that? Yeah, you know, I don't remember what bank. If you, if you call me, I'll be in my business to get Joe's number. But that would be a good piece. Then you can go to nola.com. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you can see. Okay, well, we'll 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 see. Okay, but in some cases, a tax sale plan can also have foreclosure. You can go directly to that bank and it doesn't seem to be an automatic. There may be some liens on this. Yeah, they got to see the tax sale plan. I mean, you can buy some of the tax sale plan. The liens look at the end of the plan. It's not going to be a good one. And in some cases, yeah. Hey. I recorded you last, I think last night was it? Right before last. Yeah. 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 How you doing, bro? Fine. Good to meet you. Fine. I thought I met you before. No, first time I ever ran into you. Okay. First time. You got a nice shooter. Y'all be bringing the facts. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in the network of what was us, the few of us that was there, so straight out. Other person I forgot, and I couldn't find a number. Because I just got there right before we buried uh, another Jew Bank, well, and my office thing was in his age. Yeah, he doing well. Yeah. Ain't but about me, the 20 pounds bigger than us. Yeah, I said, no, I can't stand it. <laughs> now, Lil, Lil Lewis was like, Really? They want to pick the back. Yeah. Uh, even though you still have to go to the wall. Hell, what did you do? Come on, why not bring it back? Oh, now I ain't hurt you. You didn't have to go to the cellar. Oh, man. Yeah, bro. 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 Yeah, I'm thinking about coming for the first time since I left my, my, my mom and my dad. I've been there since 1990. So I'm public. I'm in the book. You get the San Diego? I'm in the phone book. I've always been in the phone book. I'm thinking about coming for the um, the New Jazz Festival. All right. I've seen it about 25 years. Oh, yeah. Just for that weekend. Yeah. Yeah. When are you leaving? Uh, the fourth. Wednesday the fourth. Okay, all right, all right. So we're gonna get break some bread. I met Caesar's house. Yeah. Okay, I'll call uh, you. I can get you on this number. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's my other thing. Right, right on the bottom. 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 Right on the All right, yeah. All right, enjoy. Hey, how you doing? Hey, good morning, sir. Hey, I'm all right. Good to see you. Thanks for coming. You know. Yeah, until the fourth.
my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of the righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointed my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. 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 My name is Citroen George, and I am going to read the uh, scripture from the New Testament. I'm going to read from the book of John. The 
12th chapter. As a matter of fact, I'm going to read the 11th chapter. Now, a certain man was sick. His name was Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and the sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. And when he had heard therefore that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. Then after that, he said unto his disciples, Let us go into <coughs> Judea again. His disciples said unto him, Master, the Jews of late sought to stone thee, and goest thou thither again? Jesus answered, Are they not twelve hours in the day? If a man walk in the day, he stumbleth. But he seeth the light of this world. But if a man walk at night, he stumbleth not, because there is no light in him. These things said he after that, and said unto them, O oh, friend Lazarus, sleepeth. But I go that I may awake him out of sleep. Then said his disciple, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. How be Jesus spoke of his death? But they thought that he had spoken of taking a rest and sleep. Then he said unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And I glad for your sakes that I was not there to the intent that ye may believe. Nevertheless, let us go unto him. Then said Thomas, who is called Didymus, unto the fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. Then when Jesus came, he found that he had lain in the grave four days already. Now Bethany was nigh unto Jerusalem, about fifteen for long. And many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to, com to comfort them concerning their brother. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went to meet him. But Mary sat still in the house. Then Martha said unto Jesus, Lord, if thou had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now, Whosoever thou will ask of whatsoever thou will ask of God, he will give it thee. Said Jesus unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection on the last day. And Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the truth and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Here and in May we bow our heads with a prayer. Eternal Almighty God, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we come and bow here in our hearts before the throne. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for having a mind to serve you. We thank you, Lord. Lord, we ask you to look on this family, look on these friends right now. We know you're able to give them consolation. We know you're able to give them strength at the time when they lost their loved ones. Bless them and so. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for your grace, for your mercy, for your word. Look on every soul. And as we pray, we say, Our Father, which art in heaven, how it be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give me this day our daily bread and forgive us I would trespass you. And we forgive those who have against us. And lead us not to temptation, but live from all evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. George here. 
but this time we'll be playing with a solo by White Franklin.
He was a dedicated fan of the New Orleans Saints, as well as a viewer of his daily favorite soap operas, The Young and the Restless. <laughs> Mr. Lou often responds to the call of many local uptown social and pleasure, pleasure groups with doors open wide. It was the common sentiment that if you needed him, Mr. Lou only needed to call him. Mr. Lou's second and dry's establishment maintained the same clientele for more than 30 years, resulting in the development of a neighborhood family. He was preceded in debt by his wife, Lois Taylor L.Y., parents, Mary Bell Marquess and Rosalus Elliot, Rosalus L.Y., and siblings, Lawrence Marquess, Florence Marquess Bayham, Mary Louise St. Cyr Burbank, and Royal L.Y. He lived to cherish his loving memories, his daughter Teresa L.Y., Bernadette Gibbons, Carla Short, Darius, son Louis L.Y. Jr., Caesar L.Y., Michael L.Y., Blaine Smith, sister-in-law Gloria Thomas, as well as 13 grandchildren, 11 great-grandchildren, and a host of nieces and nephews and devoted friends and loyal patrons. Mr. Lou will be missed and his memories will cherished by his family and friends. I just want to say to the L.Y. family, continue to look towards the hills from which come your help with all your help coming from the Lord. Amen. bread man and and this week the scripture pointed to what's been quoted twice here today John 11 but scripture earlier this week pointed to John 14 and just the first six verses just struck me as I you know contemplated our relationship with Louis and Caesar and T and Blaine said and he pointed to <clears throat> let not your heart be troubled you believe in God believe also in me in my father's house are many mansions if it were not so I would have told you I go to prepare a place for you if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Just remember that. Lewis has gone to prepare that place for all of us. And we're all going to see him. And I, I, I thought that the poem that you all selected was just so appropriate. It's called, The Day God Called You Home. God looked around his garden and he found an empty place. He then looked up on the earth and saw your tired face. He put his arms around you and lifted you to rest. God's garden must be beautiful. He always takes the best. He knew you were suffering. He knew you were in pain. He knew that you would never get well on earth again. He saw that the road was getting rough and the hills were hard to climb. So he closed your weary eyelids and whispered, peace be thine. It broke our hearts to lose you, but you didn't go alone. For part of us went with you the day God called you home. 
T, Lou, Caesar, Steph, Blaine. We all gonna see him one day. So. And it's time we have reflections. Mr. Norris Henderson. First, I want to give my condolences to the family, to all the friends. And being someone out of that neighborhood, born and raised on Philip and Manuel, you know, knowing what that location meant. And when I'm around there now, I kind of like see all the other buildings of what was, but I still see what is. And so one of my reflections was I heard in the obituary with a lady say how Mr. Lou liked to watch the young and the restless. And everybody kind of chuckled. And that's the reflection. That's the reflection. That's the memory that somebody's clinging on to that they're going to remember Mr. Lou by. But I think my last probably precious memory is that a year ago, we traveled, our organization traveled to Atlanta. And we were wondering whether or not Teresa was going to be able to go because of Mr. Lewis's condition. And so we kind of like just toyed with this back and forth. How can we make this thing happen? So one of the things was we, every time we had a meeting, Teresa would bring it. And so at one of the meetings, I was like, Mr. Lou, we're going to Atlanta. What's up? And he kind of like just looked at me and just nodded. I'm saying, you down? He said, yeah, I'm down for the ride. And so my memory is that, one, is that, one, Mr. Lewis means a lot to me. One, because he is kind of like exemplifies what a father should be, what a grandfather should be, what a loving brother should be. And that's what I cling to, because I want to be the tribe to be the father, the grandfather, and the sibling, you know, to my family the same way. Because I think when I look at what he's left, you know, they say it all starts some way. And when we look, and I look at what he left behind, I mean, y'all got a lot to be proud of. You know, and one of the things about being here too, because you know, I've been going to funerals since I was two years old. It's been like 53 years I've been attending funerals. My mama died when I was two. And funerals have always been kind of sad things. And then, you know, kind of like with me, I'm born on November 1st, All Saints Day. So it's like most of my cherished days were spent in the cemetery. But this is not a sad funeral. There's no reason for anybody to be sad. And the reason for that because if we just cling on and we re reflect, if we reflect on all the things that why Mr. Lewis passed through our life. You know, everybody got a different reason why he passed through our life. And we just cling on to that one thing, that one jewel that he left with us. I think the rest of our life will be for the better. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Teresa asked me to speak this morning. I told her I didn't feel as though I could do it because Lewis and I were very close. <coughs> she ended up encouraging me to speak. So this morning, I would like to thank her for that encouragement. <coughs> Today, all our family and everyone gathered here this morning. I would like to speak of Louis Elwa as a friend, a family man, and a businessman. I met Louis in the mid-60s when I was starting my teaching career. We immediately became friends, and that friendship has lasted over 40 years. Now, when you say the word friend, what are you really saying? What do you really mean? The dictionary defines the word friend as someone who knows and likes another person. 
person who favors and supports. These words describe Louis Selwyn. Louis knew and liked a lot of people. You can tell that by looking around you this morning. Amen. It seems as though he touched a lot of lives during his lifetime. Louis always greeted his friends and customers with a smile and hello. Whenever I would stop in, he would always ask me, how's it going, Matt? How was your day? And I would tell him, rough. <laughs> <laughs> Some of us customers, he favored more than others. This is, is expected because we all had favorites. For example, a favorite car, favorite cake, and etc. I think I was one of his favorite customers. And the reason why I feel that way is I was allowed to go behind the ball. <laughs> you know, Lewis, no one was allowed behind the ball. Whenever that family had a family reunion, I would work the ball while Lewis attended the funeral. I'm sorry, the reunion. Lewis made me a loan to cover the closing costs when I was purchasing my house. He had two questions. How much do you need? And when do you need it? He didn't ask me the third question. <laughs> when was I going to pay it back? <laughs> and by the way, I found out I did pay it back. <laughs> he visited me when I was in Turo Hospital after my surgery. Strange thing, about two weeks later, Lewis had the same surgery I had. When I, ex when I decided to accept the Lord as my savior, Lewis was at my baptism, although he was confined to a wheelchair. Lewis was a family man. He loved his family. He supported his family. You can tell that by looking around you at his sons, daughters, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. Lewis was an outstanding businessman. He was the owner and operator of the Sportsman's Corner and Van Houston Shower Doors. He worked the shower business in the daytime, nine to five, five days a week. He worked the Sportsman's Corner seven days a week, opening in the afternoon during the week opening at 12 on Saturdays and Sundays. He, pro he provided a safe and comfortable atmosphere for you to socialize and relax. I never witnessed any problems in the spokesman's corner. <coughs> he provided an open ball during the Christmas holidays. He allowed social and pleasure clubs to use his place of business as a meeting place. Your Mardi Gras day was never over until you stopped by Second and Drive. <coughs> Lewis was a loyal Saints fan. I have one regret. He never had an opportunity to see the Saints win the Super Bowl. <laughs> I'm going to miss him, and I will never forget him. My friendship will continue through the family. Family, if you need me, many of you have my number, just give me a call. stand and be free 
He wants you to be happy because he found a better place. And that place he found was in Christ Jesus. I bring you greetings today from the St. James Baptist Church in Lafayette, Louisiana, where the Reverend Donald R. Washington served as pastor. This morning I come before you to let you know that earth have no sorrow that heaven cannot kill. Caesar L. Wyatt is family. The father of my little niece, Chelsea. I met Teresa, I think, on one occasion. But I said to the rest of the family, hold on to God's unchanging hand. And if you ever need a friend who will stick closer than a brother, I recommend Jesus. You know, you can call that man at any time. Call him in the morning. Call him at the noonday. Call him late at night. You know, his line is, is never busy. You just pick up your telephone, you know, and you dial one, one, one. That is one for the father, one for the son, and uh, one for the Holy Ghost. You see, the Bible tells me, behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible body must put on incorruptible. This model shall put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this model shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? According to the scripture, I know we are gathered today just to pay our last respect to someone who has surpassed the three score and 10, 77 years. Oh, that's a blessing. Amen. Because so many are going on at 20, 16, 35, but the Lord allowed him to live a fruitful and fulfilled life. And you as family and friends should be glad. Psalms 121 tells me, I look up to the mountain. Does my help come from the mountain? No, my help come from the Lord who made the heaven and the earth. He shall not let you stumble and he will not let you fall. The one who watches over you as you slumber and as you sleep. The Lord stand beside you. You see, he is that protective seal. He covers you with his blood. And I think you should praise God for that. Who else would you want to watch over your soul? Amen. Nobody but Jesus. At such a time as this, we need to trust in the Lord, family. He is a God of sympathy. Not only that, he is a God of understanding. He knows you're hurt. He knows when you're lonely. According to the book of 2 Peter, he said, cast all your cares upon him, for he cared for you. Today, we come to a time when we are faced with the two greatest mysteries of the universe. That is life and death. Oh, and death is certainty. Death will creep and find you. That's one thing we can't hide from. We cannot hide 
from death. That's one appointment. I don't care where you may be. That's one appointment, family and friends, you're going to keep. You see, when Jesus faced what he knew was certain, and that was death, he said, I'm not alone because the Father is with me. So Jesus is saying to you, family, those of us who are grieved, those who are bewildered, he said, you are not alone. The Father is with you. You see, God, he promised never to leave us. He promised never to leave us alone. And when you need him, you just call upon him. He's there for you. Well, if there were no God, my Lord, we might be in despair today. If there was not a Jesus, there would be no one to give us consolation. No one to give us strength in this hour of bereavement. We need not fear. We need to just trust in God. As the scripture went forward, it said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. He said, believe also in me. For in my father's house, you know, Dwight, there are many mentions. He said, it was not so. He said, I would have told you. Well, finally, Jesus taught by demonstration that human life exists beyond the grave. And that is the doorway to the future. Right. Remember what Jesus told Thomas? He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man could come to the Father except by me. That is not an unforeseen accident. So many people think it's an accident. Mm -hmm. Why did this happen? Why did that happen? But it's not an accident. It is a planet. That man that is born of a woman shall surely die. According to the book of James, it tells me that life is a vapor that appears for a time and then vanishes away like a cloud floating through the air, which finally change into different liquids. Man that is born of a woman is of a few days and full of trouble. He comes forth with a flower and is cut down. He flees as a shadow and continues not. You know, a songwriter said, when we have done the best that we can, and we have did everything that was assigned for us to do, you know, we say that this isn't enough. That forces us, y'all, to trust in the almighty God. I don't know about you, but I will trust in the Lord until I die. Amen. I want to be ready to meet him. Family, I tell you today, wait not because he's in a better place. But your memories will live on and on. You didn't want to give him up. And you're going to miss the smile that was upon his face. But Teresa, right now, he's asleep in Jesus. And in heaven, he will take his place. Don't weep without hope. Do not weep without hope. I want you to know that weeping may endure for a night. But joy will come in the morning. I leave this with your family. Are you prepared? Are you prepared to meet the beaver? Are you prepared to stand up in front of the judgment bar? The primary question is, when death shall come for me? When death shall come for you? Will you be ready 
to meet him. And you know, I don't care what you might be doing. You could be on the rooftop. You could be cooking in the kitchen, driving along in your automobile. When that time comes, trust me, you will be caught up. You will be absent from the body and present with the Lord. Hold on, family, and run the race. Run the race with patience. Are you running to get the prize? The prize of a high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. Are you looking to the end of the tunnel where there's a light? Don't you want to behold his face? Don't you want to be able to say that Paul? I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. There's laid up for me a crown of righteousness that only the righteous judge will give. Will you be ready, family? Will you be ready to meet him? Because I want to be ready when Jesus comes. We sing the song, 99 and a half, just won't do it. Lord, I'm ready. Trying to make a hundred because I want to see what the end will be. I thank you today. I thank you for your time. And I thank you for your, your, your attention. But just hold on. Amen. Hold on Amen. to God's unchanging hand. Oh, yes. He won't leave you, yes. nor will he forsake you. Thank you. Amen. That was nice. Amen. At this time, this is the minister's present. You may follow. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. Singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. Chain and glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me down on my knee. Jesus lifted me down on my knee. Jesus lifted me down on my knee. Jesus lifted me. Chain and glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me to the Spirit of Christ to the ministers and to the family. I mean, truly, God is good. Yes, I only know um, Brother Lewis a short time. I went to the hospital and prayed for him and the Lord. And truly, God is good. Everybody say, thank you, Jesus. Come on, say hallelujah. hallelujah. The Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and the truth endures to all generations. May we enjoy the word today. But the Lord is coming back. Amen. But to the family, may God bless you. May God keep you. We are praying for you. And truly, God is good. So we are praying for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Are there any other ministers present? <clears throat> At this time, we have a solo by Alden Bird and Days. Is he present? Yes. As he sang this song, would the undertakers come forward? At this time, as we prepare for the final viewing, I just want to remain seated where you are until all flowers are removed from the building. Excellent. Those in the hallway, just form a line to the right side of the building. Everyone in the hallway, just form a line to the right side.
I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he died, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes us bring a lot down and bring down so He leads me beside the still water. He leads me in the past of righteousness. For his name's sake, the age where I walk, so I do the head of the shadow of death. I will see no evil. A table before me in the presence of my head. The anointed my head was off. Blood is over. Surely, goodness and mercy. I
Okay, boy. All right. Y'all have a good one. Y'all have a good one. Y'all have a good one. All right. All right. Thank you. 
So far, so good. Thank you. Oh yeah, you're on there. We got you. We got you. We'll put you on TV next. Oh, oh. All right. <laughs> What's that? All right. Oh, that's my little girl. 
Hi, how are you? Good you. How you doing? I'm doing okay. Good. All right. Okay. How's retirement? I'm loving it. Loving it? I'm loving it. Yeah, that's what you're supposed to do. Be able to enjoy it. I'm doing exactly what my daddy told me I was good for. Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. That's right. He, you know, he's, you know, he's on a cloud, you know, he's nine, ten years old, and he stops and says, hey, boy, you know what you're good for? Nothing. He said, no, daddy, what? Nothing. And that's what I'm doing. Nothing. That's good. That's good. But you deserve it. You deserve it. Hey, honey, how you doing? I'm kind of sweaty, though. All right. How you right. doing, baby? Now. That's good. Can I do that? Uh, all right. I did good.
Why are you still here? Why you still here? I'm looking at you. Yeah, he's supposed to be gone. Yeah, I'm wondering why you still here. Excuse me, brother, hold that up, would you? Open it up. <laughs> 